Hey, Dan from Home Meets Road with one of our RV campground reviews. This one is all about our stay at Oceana RV and Camping Res... There's that word again. Um, Oceana Encore? No. Oceana Res... No. Oceana Thousand Trail? You know what? Let's just call it Oceana and move on with the video. So before we get started, here are the timestamps for this video. Oceana, whatchamacallit, is located about two and a half hours southwest of Seattle or about two hours south of Olympic National Park but there are some trails within an hour's drive. This park has a designated entrance and exit. The south would be the exit, which makes the north the entrance. So be sure to enter on the north side and you will see the ranger station ahead of you. When you get to the ranger station, make sure to stay to the right for the check-in line. You are able to choose your own site here and as most parks, uh, most thousand trails in Washington, you fill out a slip letting them know which site you picked and you drop it off in one of their mailboxes. When it comes to the park layout, the map makes this park look much better than it actually is. And nowhere here does it state, but only this front section has full hookups. The rest of the park is water electric only. Now, as far as I understand, all of the park is 30 amps only. Well, I think at least maybe the full hookups have 50 amps, but don't quote me on that. When it comes to amenities, this park does not have a lot to offer. There is a playground in the back and this cool laundry room done in a vintage trailer which sounds great until you step in and well it's in need of some TLC especially the floor it seems like the washer and dryers are a little harsh on the floors and have shifted them now talking to some of the long-term residents here apparently the laundry room is going to get redone soon again don't quote me on that what this park does have going for it is its own beach access to an area of the beach that really does not seem to be used by anyone and thus you could end up being the only one enjoying this entire beach to yourself. We ended up in Site 66, which is the last spot on the south side. Most sites in the back can accommodate pretty much any size rig, at least lengthwise. Widthwise, you are pretty close to your neighbor and I'd be surprised if two big rigs with some big slides could actually fit next to each other. Our site had water electric only, no issues to report. However, it was 30 amps only. For connectivity, we have Verizon and AT&T. Verizon was pretty much useless and which was surprising. Verizon has done us really well in Washington, but apparently there are no towers close by. AT&T was good enough to get some work done. <music> 
issues this is slowly becoming my favorite subject in this videos and i don't even know where to start honestly i think this park may have just been bought by thousand trails or encore or something rather because a lot of their signs look brand new but that's about it the rest of the park looks like it's been neglected for decades nothing is level there's flooding happening everywhere when it rains and well it's washington and it just it needs some tlc a lot of tlc most of the park has no sewer whatsoever which means you will need to use the dump station and although the dump station seems to be in a convenient place right to the left side of the exit it is so far forward that if you have a large rig you may actually be ending up in the street while dumping if you found this video helpful consider giving it a thumbs up so it will be recommended to others and now let's answer that question would we stay here again this time the answer is a hard no um, unless Encore or Thousand Trails or whoever owns this campground puts in some serious work, I don't think I'm coming back at all. And to be honest, the location is kind of awkward. It is really in the middle of nowhere, two and a half hours from Seattle and pretty much two hours from Olympic National Park. If you're going to Olympic National Park, just go and stay at a national campground there. Yeah. So on that, if you have any questions about this video, leave a comment below and I will do my best to answer it. And if you haven't subscribed already, we are a family of three living full time in our rebuilt vintage travel trailer. We share the good, the bad and the ugly of building your own RV and living the nomadic life. Consider subscribing and we hope to see you on the road. Thanks for watching and happy travels.